Now that we understand the fundamentals of 1D kinematics, how do we analyze the motion of objects in 2D? While we hopefully know the basics of objects traveling in straight lines, the other most common type of AP Physics 1 kinematic question is the projectile motion questions. A simple way to think of the projectile motion is an object with a velocity vector that has both an x or horizontal and y or vertical component. As this object moves, gravity tugs the object down towards Earth, giving you the characteristic parabolic arc of a basketball shot or a tennis ball throw. Now, this motion can look confusing at first, but there's really only one piece of vital information to know to solve these problems. The horizontal and vertical components of an object's motion are completely independent. In other words, the vertical height, velocity, and acceleration of a ball being thrown are completely unrelated to the horizontal position and velocity, with the velocity components v sub x and v sub y being found through simple trigonometry. Because of this, we can apply these kinematic equations from before on each component separately and break down any projectile into a horizontal and vertical sets of motion. Looking at the horizontal component, there is no acceleration along the x-axis, as in AP Physics 1 we deal with situations without air resistance. Because of this, the horizontal motion on a ball being thrown will follow a constant velocity scenario, making these equations all that you'll need to know for x directions. Similarly, the vertical motion is simply a constant acceleration problem like our 1D cases, with the acceleration in this case being gravity, or 9.8 meters per second squared. The most important thing with this value is the negative sign often associated with it as it's directed downwards, so make sure that all the velocities directed up are positive and down are negative as well. With this distinction made, let's derive some of the most useful equations regarding projectile motion of an object that starts and ends at the same height. To begin, because this motion is symmetric, the vertical component of the object's velocity will logically end up in the opposite of its original value. Using the equation that the acceleration changing this velocity or gravity must be equal to the rate of change of velocity, we can solve for the total time the object is in the air. Using this time, we can easily find how far the object travels, or what's known as the range equation. Remembering that horizontally, this object moves at a constant velocity v sub x for this quantity of time, the total horizontal distance or range is not hard to find either. In a similar branch of thought, the object's peak height should occur at half of this air time due to the symmetry of its parabola path. Plugging this time value into our old kinematic equation used in the vertical direction, we can also solve for the maximum height of the object's trajectory. Finally, I want to show you one final equation that in my opinion is the biggest cheat code for projectile motion. Combining the y and x kinematic equations together using the fact that the time at any given point must be the same in both directions, we can actually solve for the height of an object as a function of its horizontal displacement, x. In other words, this equation can tell you the y of an object at any x, which essentially shows you a graph of the object's actual path. While this equation is quite complicated and not necessary at all to memorize, it can be extremely useful for saving time on multiple choice or short answers problems. We can solve for anything we need by separating the components. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about projectile motion.